Good morning, my fellow scientists. It is Friday, June 30th, 2017. Happy Friday, and let's talk about batteries some more. Read an interesting paper this morning about battery failure investigated with scanning computed tomography of an act of a battery on the micro scale. So it's the same thing as a CAT scan, but it was done on a little failed pouch cell battery in order to figure out just what went wrong when that battery failed. So what can go wrong when a battery fails? To understand the failure mode of a lithium ion battery, we need to talk a little more about how a lithium ion battery works. So let's talk about what a battery is. A battery or electrochemical cell involves two chemical reactions. One an anode and one a cathode. And as you probably remember from general chemistry, if you took it in high school or college, at the anode you have oxidation, so that's like rusting. So you have some metal becoming some metal plus. And at the cathode you have some metal plus being reduced to some metal. So for instance, that could be lithium becoming lithium plus, or it could be anything else, iron plus becoming iron. Now when that happens, of course, you have electrons coming out, and they have to go somewhere, so they go through your load. It could be your voltmeter, your ammeter, or resistor, or whatever, flashlight, and they go in in order to be taken up by that reduced metal. Here's the thing. If this is all we had, the whole battery would shut down very quickly because these negative charges would quickly accumulate on this side and shut the whole thing down. So we need some way to move charges to balance out that negative, but we don't want electrons to be able to get through and cheat and not go through our load. So we have some salt bridge that is between them. I'm going to color that some other color just for clarity here. All right, so there's your basic electrochemical cell, but it's not exactly practical. To make it a little more practical, we can change things around just a little bit by, for instance, making our anode chemistry, but right up next to our cathode chemistry, put our salt bridge right in between, and we can connect up to the back like this. So now you have a much easier way for the chemical reactions to exchange with the salt quickly and efficiently. There is, of course, a downside to this. Unlike this long, skinny salt bridge, it's really easy for a bit of that reduced metal over here to build up and make a short circuit. So if you should ever connect your anode and cathode metals together, that right there avoids your load and just passes current right through generating heat and ultimately deforming and destroying your battery. And in fact, that's exactly what you see in the x-ray tomography. So if you look at the x-ray tomography of one of these pouch cells, you can see that one tiny defect somewhere in the system has caused all of these layers to be distorted drastically. Instead of nice flat little layers you see here, you see all these things are expanded and distorted. And that obviously is better than an explosion, but is not a functional battery. So if you're interested in this sort of thing, I've left a link to this article below, and I think it's pretty informative, both of the kind of techniques people are using to explore batteries and also the kinds of things that cause batteries to fail. Hope you found that interesting. Thanks for tuning in. If you like that kind of thing, think about hitting that like button. Think about subscribing for next time. We update Monday through Friday, and we talk about batteries, chemistry, DIY projects, and how to store energy here in the Allen Lab.